In a previous video, we looked at an arithmetic sequence, and we defined what an arithmetic sequence was. Uh, here, we're going to examine what's called a geometric sequence. And so, as usual, I'd like to analyze it by placing it into a table. And I'm going to call that 2 the first term, the 6 the second term, etc. So again, ultimately, we want to come up with a, a rule that tells us what the nth term is going to be. Um, so to get a handle on this, I have another graph here, and we're going to plot these points. And that's about all we can fit. And so what I want you to recognize is that the behavior of this, uh, the graph of this sequence is exponential. So I want you to think of this as an exponential relationship. All right. So what's special about an uh, uh, exponential uh, functions? Well, it turns out that to get from 2 to 6, you times by 3, and to get from 6 to 18, you also times by 3, and to get from 18 to 54, you times by 3. So to get from output to output, you're timesing by 3. Now, getting from output to output is not really what we're interested in. What we want to know is how do I get from input to output? Right? In other words, I want the explicit rule I want the explicit rule for this function here well I think the best way to think about it is um, this 2 that begins my sequence here is not being timesed by a 3 at all right and then to get to the 6 I'm timesing by uh, I'm timesing by 3 twice. So this, uh, I'm sorry, I'm timesing by 3 once. So the 6 I can view as 2 times 1, 3. The 18, well, I'm timesing, I'm starting with a 2 and I'm timesing by 3 twice to get there. The 54, I'm timesing by 3 three times. And so this is a pattern, so I'm going to, just for consistency, the 2 is timesing by 3 zero times. So now what you can see is that if you focus on the structure of how we just described the outputs now, um, it looks like the 2 times the 3 is always there. What's changing are those exponents, and the question is how do those exponents relate to those end values? Well, it looks like they're one less than our, than our input, so I'm going to put to the n minus 1. And so that is our explicit rule, f of n is equal to 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. So now if I want to know the, the 50th term, the 100th term, I can just plug those numbers in and I'll know what they are. Uh, as usual, we're going to go a little further and we're going to um, extend this table. <clears throat> and so I'm going to call this column f of n plus 1 divided by f of n. And as I did in the last video, we're just going to start plugging in numbers and see what happens. So when I plug 1 in for n in this, in this rule, it becomes f of 2 divided by f of 1. And so if you go back and look, that would be 6 divided by 2. Well, that's a 3. And if I go to the next term, plug in a 2, that would be f of 3 divided by f of 2. And that's 18 divided by 6, which is a 3. And so hopefully you can anticipate what the rest would be. Um, this is just saying if you take any term and divide it by the one before it, you're going to get a 3. So I know my my uh, call, my rows kind of got unsynchronized here, so I apologize. But you get the idea, right? You take any term and divide it by the one before it, and you get a 3. Because you always get a 3 when you divide, this is called 
not the common difference. When we did arithmetic sequences, it was a common difference. This is called a common ratio. Okay, that word ratio should conjure up uh, that operation, the operation of division, because you're dividing a term by the one before it. Now this column reveals the defining characteristic of a geometric sequence, which is that um, every term divided by the one before it is is this number three, or is a is a is a common number. So the recursive rule for this geometric sequence is just that any term divided by the one before it is going to be 3. All right? And again, as usual, we we often isolate the n plus first term and write it like this. So if I divide uh, multiply both sides by f of n, I get this. And again, a recursive rule tells you how to get from output to output, but you do have to specify where to start. So in this case, f of 1 is equal to 2. And so there's my recursive rule. So I have my explicit rule that gets me from input to output. I got my recursive rule, which gets me from output to output. Uh, and I'm all set to go with a geometric sequence. Uh, and on the next page, we'll define formally what a geometric sequence is. So the definition of a geometric sequence. The sequence 2, 6, 18, 54 is an example of one. And in general, a sequence is geometric if this following condition is met. There is a number r which can't be equal to zero. And I encourage you to think about why that why r can't be zero. Called the common ratio. such that f of n plus 1 is equal to r times f of n for all n bigger than 0. All right, so in our example above, r was 3. This is the defining characteristic of a geometric sequence. And with an arithmetic sequence, I wanted you to think, um, think of it as a line, as think linearly. Here, I want you to think of this as an exponential, where you're multiplying by the same number to get from output to output.